next speaker has scaled new heights, literally. She was the youngest Indian woman to climb the Mount Everest, and she was only 19. And she's climbed all the seven peaks in the world. To talk about this fascinating girl we have, Krishna Patti. Hello, everyone. Uh, so basically, I'm going to start with why or how I ended up doing mountaineering. Uh, first of all, when I was in school, uh, I was very clear that I didn't want a degree uh, or a piece of paper to decide who I am and what I am in life. I didn't want uh, what I studied to decide my status and my level in society by what I'd studied. That was something that was sort of in my head. And uh, well, I, I finished, I, I did my 11th and 12th in arts in uh, symbiosis. And we used to bunk college and go to Ferguson College to attend lectures there. And uh, I realized that it's just a reading of the textbook. It's not, it's not informative, it's not exciting, it's not explorative. It's just a reading by lecturers that people mug up, give exams and clear. And I decided... classroom for three years doing this and so I sort of decided that I would study externally and uh, went to Bangalore uh, to be a dancer. Uh, my initial plan was to be a dancer and uh, I did a diploma in dance, contemporary dance in Bangalore for a year uh, during which I bumped the course and went to the mountains. Now I've been addicted to the mountains ever since I was a kid. I've spent all my summer vacations in the mountains trekking or uh, exploring. Every year we did one uh, state from the Himalayas. And uh, eventually after 10th, my family stopped going up there, so I had to figure out a way of going by myself. And I went to the Nehru Institute of Mountaineering to do a course for a month. Uh, I bumped my contemporary dance course for a month, told them I have joined this and ran the course. Uh, <laughs> when I did the course, I realized that Whatever I do in my life, I want mountaineering to be a big part of it. And two of the reasons that still make me do what I do is, first, is, is probably, uh, and most probably, the, the feeling of being at, top, at the top. And more than that, it is the hard work that I put in to try to get there. Uh, and frankly, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter that I reach the top. It matters that I put my 100%. And one of the main things that changed why I wanted to do mountaineering, even though it is ridiculously tough, my fingers ache, my body aches, it's blisteringly cold, and you know I feel like my nose is going to fall off, my ears are going to fall off. But there is no way that I wouldn't do uh, what I did. And the biggest reason was this, this particular mountain. Uh, it, it sort of had all the difficulty and uh, weather problems and everything possible put into this one mountain for me. Uh, this mountain is Mount Sadovan, 7,075 meters. What makes it really tough is from camp one to camp two, it's a knife ridge. It's, and you basically have to cat walk on it with about 15 kgs on your back. And my shoes, my, each shoe weighs about two and a half kgs. And you, you can see three of us, I mean, you can't see it on the screen that clearly, but in that circle, there's three of us on that ridge. Uh, it's a 20,000 feet drop on either side. But this is the mountain that gave me the expertise for for all the mountains that I did ahead. Uh, when I did Everest, I had, this was the only mountain that I'd climbed before that, and that is very, very less experience to be going for something as big as Everest. But uh, that didn't matter. We had night climbing. We would climb at three in the morning and have the worst wind possible on that same ridge, but still managed to go forward. Uh, when I finally went for Everest, well, this is when I finally went for Everest, uh, 
when I was actually on the mountain, it did not matter to me that it was Everest. When I went onto the mountain, all that mattered to me was that I was getting a chance to do something that I totally am crazy about. There's nothing else that mattered to me but to be able to be on a mountain and give my 100% to climbing. Uh, it never crossed my mind whether I would reach the top. It never crossed my mind what if I don't reach the top. I just knew that I had to give my 100% to it and just focus on what I am doing. Uh, my instructors had sort of drilled me with this one saying which was summiting is optional but returning is mandatory and this sort of becomes one of the toughest decisions when you are 200 meters away from the summit but you know that it's bad weather or that you know that your oxygen is going to get over or you know that it's not sufficient oxygen for you to go up and go back down and you have to make that decision to turn back. At that point you have to be strong enough to know that you are what you are whether you go that 200 meters or you don't and in fact you're a greater person if you don't do those 200 meters and actually have the strength to come back down from being that close to your goal. Uh, when you actually reach the top, one of the most frequently asked questions to me was what I felt at the top. And frankly, I am still discovering what I felt. Every time I speak to someone, every time I have a conversation about it, a little bit of what I actually felt on top of the world is, is something that I discover on a regular basis. And recently I have come to the conclusion that reaching the top is a moment of completeness. It's a moment of zero. It's an absolute complete circle to what we strive for. It, it is like 20 years of meditation and that epitome of silence that you reach that I could reach in one and a half months and just feel that with the entire world beneath me. Uh, and that feeling is addictive. So once I finished Everest, I started on the Seven Summit Quest, which is basically the highest in every continent. And uh, I started with Everest, followed by Kilimanjaro, Antarctica. Antarctica was one of those moments where I came very close to the summit and had to probably decide to go back. But I did manage to get to the summit for a, a merely of three minutes, put the tricolor there and get back. After that I did South America, I did uh, Europe, I did Australia and I did North America which was not a successful climb but I came back. Uh, there, is, there is a lot of times that on the mountain that you walked for 12 hours, your socks are wet and you just want to lie down. And at that point, just taking off your shoes is like a task. But I cannot wait to get back to doing that on a mountain. Uh, in 2013, I plan to start with the 14th summit list, which is basically uh, all the peaks above 8,000 meters. And uh, we, we draw, we're going to try for K2, which is in POK next year. And uh, these are the list of the 14th summits which I will be embarking on very shortly. Uh, and what I have realized is that however tough it is what I do and uh, it, it has, I still don't know how I can earn out of it and how I can make a living out of it. Uh, but I know that I will go through everything possible to make sure that I continue to climb and to make India proud. Thank you.